Hi everyone, it's Anne here from annshappystampers.co.uk and welcome to another Spring and Summer Sunday. Um, now today what we're going to be making is this which is quite similar to the beautiful box I made the other day um, and it's been so popular. I've had some, you know, some lovely comments, messages and I've seen loads of people make them already so I'm really pleased with that but yeah this is a smaller version and um, it's also wider as well and I've just kind of added some different decorations on the top and again this just opens up into a little box so you could get loads of things in there whatever you like really and I rounded the corners on this one which I think looks quite nice so that's what I'm going to show you how to do so for that I am using, um, I'm going to use dapper denim and this needs to measure ten and a half by eight and a quarter inches, okay. You also need some panels for your, um, your little pieces that wrap round, like you know that curve round the box. And I'm actually going to use perpetual birthday calendar for this and I've just realized it's not a spring and summer stamp set but <laughs> never mind it's too late I've stamped them now and I've used this one here all right so I've already done three of them we've got one more to do and these all need to measure five by two and a half inches okay so I think We'll stamp this and get this out the way and I'm using dapper denim ink for this as well. I mean that's a great little stamp set. There's some um, lovely little backgrounds in and you can make all your own kinds of DSP. So I'm just going to create a little pattern. Yes, I was so, so pleased about the box because it went down really well with everybody and I've seen so many people make them in their different versions and styles. But, um, I mean, I knew it would be popular, but people really, really love it, so that's great. I mean, I think it would just look fantastic maybe it's in a windowsill or on the fireplace just like I said on the video just as a display because it does look so pretty and I know a few people have put um, artificial flowers in theirs because it does look very much like a vase so that's the little bit of stamping done I don't know what the weather's like where you are but it's snowing here it's absolutely freezing as well right so take your ten and a half by eight and a quarter piece of cardstock and take your scoring board and we need to score this on the long side at half sorry yes at score the long side at two and a half inches so just check that's the long side yeah of course it is <laughs> right so two and a half inches five inches seven and a half inches and ten inches Turn it to the short side and you're going to score it at half an inch. You are going to score it at three inches. Is that right? Yep, yeah. three inches and six inches. Okay, so the piece with the small score line, the half inch score line, will be the top and this will be the bottom. Okay. 
So, whoops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to knock the tripod there. I probably made you all jump. <laughs> okay, so let's score. Sorry, fold and burnish our score lines. Okay, so that's that done. Now, if we start at the bottom, we're just going to cut up all of these lines. And then you've got a small little rectangle on the end. You just want to remove that and just cut in there a little bit. And then the same with the one on the top. You just want to remove that as well. Put all that away. And then you're going to cut down all these top score lines as well. Okay, so the box is going to go together like this, okay, so we need to remove this one completely, so the second one along, remove it, and then we need to cut, <coughs> excuse me, we need to cut the first and the third we need to cut about half off each one just try and get them the same length if you can so that is what you should end up with okay and then I'm going to take the corner rounder again and I'm going to round all of the corners okay so that's what you should have now and then we just want some tape down the little tab here just to pop our box together or whatever you want to use. Okay, and then just fold the box over and it should just meet up there and you want your seam at the back so they should go in that should go in there quite nicely there we go and then we want some I'm just going to get my tape pen for this actually if I can find it that is Oh no, where's it gone? Oh, I can't find it. Right, we're going to put a bit of tape on here. And some tape on this one as well. Okay, so we'll stick that one down onto oops onto there and then this one on to there and there you go you've got your little box now our little four pieces that we stamped we actually need to put a score line in these 
so just take your scoreboard again and you just want to pop them on the long side and you want to score them at I believe it's one and a half inches so one and a half just score them all at one and a half okay and then the bit that's got the one and a half score will be the top so I'm going to round those corners as well <clears throat> so just take the corner round I mean you don't you don't have to but I thought it looks quite nice on the other one All right, so take the bone folder like we did with the other one and we just want to curl it round just to give it some shape. And then just fold those ones back a little bit that you've just scored the one and a half inch mark in. All right, so they are going to go on like that and just you're going to just stick the top like that, which is what we did with the other one. So we want to put some good strong tape on right at the very bottom again and just right under the score line as well. So I'm going to pop the tape on all of them then I know I can just quickly stick them down. And then I also use the layering square framelits to create the, the nice effect on the top. I just basically started and then um, just layered the sizes down from the normal shape to the scallop shape. And I thought that looks quite nice actually. Okay, so the last one, just pop the tape right along the bottom. And then right under the score line. Okay, so I'm going to peel the tape off the bottom first. Take the box and just attach that to there. Make sure that's really stuck down and then just give it a bend over like that and then peel the top. And then just like I said last time, I find if you open the lid it just helps you get the placement right of the score line because you need it to be in the right place to create that that kind of bendy shape. So again just stick that along the bottom. I mean this tape is really strong as well so you know it really holds and just get that one on there
we've got one more to stick on and then that's that done. And there we go, another gorgeous, unusual little box and we'll close the lid up if it decides it wants to close. There we go. And I think they look quite pretty rounded off like that. So like I say, I've cut a selection of the, circuit, the, the layering squares out, but actually before we do that, we need to do our little um, stand again. So I've got three pieces of um, dapper denim which are cut at three by three and this is going to go on the bottom of the box. So I just glued them together. It seems to work quite well. And then just make sure they're nice and straight. And then the last one on there. Okay, and then just get your box, some glue on the bottom. And then just sit your box onto the square where you think, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe it's just back a little bit, like so. Just make sure that's all pressed down. There we go, I think that looks really pretty. So we just need to decorate the top. So what I did was I just I cut a scalloped whisper white. Then I've just gone up in the sizes with the squares. And I just want to um, stick them on with dimensionals. So what I think I'll do first is get the dimensionals and then just start gluing them onto the white and then just glue the whole thing on together. Okay sorry about that everyone I just realised the camera was going to run out so I've stuck them all together with dimensionals and there is one two three four five there's five layers on there and then I'm just gonna um find out where the opening of my box is yeah there so I'm gonna attach these to the top of the lid and I'm just going to use glue to actually attach it to the lid of the box so I just want it in the middle of the lid I just think it um, it just sets the lid off really doesn't it so that's on there, like so. And then I've got these little buttons, which I'm sure they're retired now, but there is loads of buttons that Stampin' Up! sells, so just use what you've got, really. Um, and the little button is going to go just in the middle, like that, which I'm just going to use a glue dot for that. So I'm just going to put a couple on the button, And I'm just going to attach it to the middle of those little squares and then I've got some whisper white satin ribbon and I'm going to do what I did before on the other box I'm just going to tie it around like so so I'm just going to cut a bit off like that and then I'm going to get a glue dot onto there like so and just wrap it round the back of the box
like so, and then just trim it off so it's relatively even. And then I've got another another little button which I'm going to put on with glue dots again. Just attach this to the front of the ribbon. And there we go. We have another, what I think is a gorgeous little gift box for any occasion. You know, I just think it's so, so pretty. I love these little boxes. And that's the one that I made originally so there you go I hope you I hope you like it I mean like I say it is very very similar to the other one it's just it's smaller and it's wider and I've just decorated the top differently that's all but um you know you can decorate them any way you like but I, they, they just look so nice they really really do so I hope you've enjoyed it and um, all the info will be on my blog um, and I'll be back again next week on Wednesday with another tutorial. So until then, thanks for watching and bye for now.